Today's podcast episode is brought to you by Hodinkee Insurance, a new venture partnering both Hodinkee and Chubb, two industry leaders in their respective fields. Hodinkee Insurance is a refreshing new way to protect the timepieces we enjoy and collect. It's a true game changer in that it was designed by watch enthusiasts for watch enthusiasts, and it makes the process of insuring your watches as simple as possible by eliminating the typical pain points that can make insurance such a headache. Stay tuned later in the episode for more information and be sure to check out insurance.hudinki.com or download the Hudinki app on iOS or Android. Hey everyone, welcome to the 10 and 2 podcast. I'm Kat. And I'm Catlin. And we <laughs> What? Definitely, I just never mind. What? I, I listened back, by the way, to to the because I actually listened to the audio to do show notes the last episode. Uh-huh. Usually I don't do that. Um but <laughs> just like I don't know. I feel like I just popped in and like try to say I'm Catlin in a little bit more of a sultry way last Ooh. week. And I was like, it sounds stupid. So well, I don't know how to say We I'm do Catlin. have these fancy new mic stands which so fancy. They make us feel like we're legit in a studio. Mm-hmm. We are in a studio. This is officially a studio. <laughs> so it is. I'm very proud of it because it is like, as I was saying earlier, it's like the one room in my house that's actually finished. Been here two years now. Granted, we've been renovating, but I feel like nothing is complete except for this room. Like, this room is almost complete. Mm-hmm. I'm very happy about that. P.S. Welcome to the 10 and 2 podcast yes. because we never finished that part of it. Yeah, intro. where we talk about watches, <laughs> photography, adventure, and exploring the world of horology. Uh, y'all, I'm just going to, I'm going to throw this out here. I am trying so hard to take Kat seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so we record on Fridays. If, you, if you've listened to the podcast for a while, you'll know this. We usually record on Fridays. And so today we had our, our Instagram live Halloween special, which was so fun. Thank you to everybody who tuned in, but we dressed up and Kat is still in her costume. So I am. as I'm looking across the table, it's talking <laughs> to you. Should I put my hat back on? My, my ears? <laughs> my tiger ears? She's dressed up as a tiger, face paint and everything. Yeah. So I'm sure I look so weird. It's so hard to take her seriously. I'm sorry. We were having a serious heart to heart earlier and I'm just like, man, it was so difficult. Uh but it's amazing. Good times. We had so much fun on that live chat. I mean, we need to do it more often. We, we should we, do We've been saying we, we got to do it more often. We're together once a week. Well, I feel like we, you get a different group of people that, uh, you know, we do a and a every month. But it's kind of different when you're on the spot and you're answering questions. Yeah. And, and when you can bring people on, too. Ricardo from Watch With Us channel was on there and chatted with us for a few minutes. And that was fun, too. It is. It's a, And we... We just like interacting with people. Yeah. I feel like it's... We like to talk to people. Who would have thought we like to talk a lot? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's almost like we have a podcast. I Someone said like, what did they say about me? Like, they, they're glad that I don't... I oh, I think so that their perception or? of you changed because yeah. they thought that you were very serious. Wow. I, I'm, yeah, I'm not that way at all. No. I feel like... Like maybe we both, we, we present ourselves a certain way and mm-hmm. you more so than that. I, I'm a shit show a lot of times people know that, but like you do. And I think maybe that that's the Southern in us. It's the way that we're kind of raised where we don't, we put the picture that we put of ourselves out there is the one we want people to see. Yeah. You know, we don't want people to see, you know, that a lot of times we don't know what we're doing or something like that, but you guys think that we do. So yeah. You know, it, it's just, it's this idea and, and this idea that we do take ourselves seriously. We do. Trust me. We we take this podcast seriously. We take like what we do very seriously, but life is too short to not have fun. And I mean, all we do is cut up and joke and just pick on each other and pick, pick on ourselves because yeah. to each of us, we're, we're each the biggest losers. Ever, so, <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. We are. And yeah, we're, we're I'm so like I know. humbled by everyone's support. It's fun. Yeah, it is fun. Let's get into <laughs> today's topic. I'm excited about today's topic. Yeah, we, you you totally came up with this because I was I didn't know what the heck we were going to talk about. To be <laughs> honest with you, well, so so both of us are 
famous last words over not buying any watches. First of all, I am 9,000% sure Kat's husband may fall for a divorce if Mm -hmm. she buys another watch. So for now, she's grounded. I have some stuff I'm trying to, I'm just trying to reprioritize some things in life. So I'm not buying watches really. Mm -hmm. Like I I am trying to, to be a little bit better and I want to be more cautious, but man. We want to freaking buy watches. So well, who doesn't? Bad. Every I think everyone I've yet to meet someone that's like, I'm good. I'm content with my collection. Oh, you know what? Maybe Josh, because I saw you like he posted the other day Josh on Instagram. Josh is lying. Stuff and watches. You're yeah, lying. You're, There's something else you want. Don't even. Oh, I already know what he like. Yeah, I think it's great when you get to that point that you're just really, really happy with your collection. And I'm, I'm. I'm I'm kind of there. I'm happy with my collection. I am happy. But, I, but I, it doesn't mean I don't want something else. I do. I do. But then I think about if I add, let's say, X amount of watches, am I going to be happier? Because what's going to happen is I'm not going to, I'm going to get to that same position I always get to where I stop wearing my watches because I have too many. So I think that for me, it, there's like a number. Yeah. There's a number that I can't really go over. I don't know what it is yet, but. I feel that. Yeah, I think that you can have too many watches because then you don't get the enjoyment out of them. But um, it's not about price. No, because I, I have I've had I've been in the position where I've had a lot of affordable watches and I still wanted to get rid of them. They don't they didn't bring me a lot of value, but I didn't want them anymore because I didn't wear them. Yeah. And I just I don't know. I struggle with that so much. But back to your point. <laughs> no, you're fine. I think I think I'm really struggling with the same thing too a lot lately and and I think the more we dive, you know, this has been a journey and I, I know it sounds a little bit kind of cliche or whatever, but in the last, you know, little over a year, I feel like you and I have changed a lot as far as the what we want in our watch collection yeah. and how we want to, you know, put together a collection. And I, I think that that's good. And I think I think we all go through it. I think it, it's a very natural growth, you know. Um, we would both had about the same years of experience as far as being more deep in the hobby, you mm-hmm. know, about two, three, four years of experience as yeah. far as like really starting to dive into it. Yeah. And I think we're both kind of hitting, we still have different ideas of what we want in our collections. But we were trying to really curate this idea of a collection. And I think that that's really, you know, whereas last year we were just, screw it, buy all the watches. (laughs) What happened? (laughs) All the watches got expensive. Well, I feel like I was a little bit that way. Yeah. Well, it's not just COVID. It it hit me like I just I went crazy for a bit and I bought a ton of stuff. I'm pretty sure I bought five watches earlier this year. And the thing is, like I I do like all the watches I bought, but I just wasn't again. All right. Side question. How many of those watches do you still have? Because of what I bought of what you bought this year. Oh, this year. Yeah. Uh, I have a few. Because well, I feel like you, you've you also bought and then yeah, I mean, I've, sold I've a sold, lot I've this sold, year. I, I sold a lot about yeah. a month or two that ago. You, well, and stuff that you had bought recently. Purge, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, stuff that I literally had just bought. And, it's and hard. There's no is. right or wrong answer. So no. we're just going to pretend like we're going to buy more watches, yeah. even though we're not. Um, and so the idea is we, we've listed a couple of watch categories. And if we were, if Kat was allowed to buy a watch without getting a divorce, um, <laughs> if I was allowed to buy a watch because I don't have other things going on in life, yeah. what would we buy for each of those categories? And we've even broken it down to price point. Like if we yeah. wanted to be under a thousand dollars and then if we wanted to spend however much money on yeah, it. Yeah. Because I feel like under a thousand, that's that price point that you normally can kind of, at least for me, I can kind of justify. With. Yeah. I'm like. Okay, it's it's, it's under a thousand. It's it's not cheap. I'm not saying no. that's cheap, but it's usually like I can talk myself into it. Yeah, over that, and it's got to be a really, really a big, a big conversation. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So that's the plan for today. Yeah, but like before we get into that, let's do a wristwatch. Let's check. do a wristwatch check. So, Kat, what are you wearing? Well, since I am dressed up as a tiger today, I wore the Seiko Safari. Which I thought was incredibly fitting I for this liked watch. It. Yeah. Y'all have no idea how much like we've been so excited about these <laughs> costumes and dressing up. It's been ridiculous. Yeah, I I literally took the cost. I ordered it on Amazon like three weeks ago, and then I I just assumed it was gonna fit. I didn't size it. I didn't put it on. I was dumb, and uh, took it out this morning. And of course, the orange makeup that I bought doesn't <laughs> match the orange of the outfit, but it's totally fine. It's fine. It's, it's totally still fine. like. 
award it's actually for, really like, soft like it was pretty decent quality for amazon <laughs> she's just gonna be hey get out and that's onesie it's basically the onesie. tiger onesie <laughs> um yeah i'll hang on to it never know why Might not be another tiger someday there you go yeah uh what are you wearing i am well i've changed out of my joe exotic outfit yeah um the mustache is a little itchy the wig is also <laughs> itchy and that eyebrow piercing Ooh. still hurts a little bit it was pinched on you pretty dang good so i feel like an actual could... piercing might have been less painful i feel like so too you should have just gotten a real piercing and taken it out for work tomorrow yeah um so i am in my oris aquas the mint dial oris aquas is what i have on the wrist today yeah Oh, because um, you did have the Planet Ocean. Earlier. I did have the yeah. white Planet Ocean, but it doesn't match my sweater. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know how it is. You are extra. Like, you bought a, another watch. I bought another, bought wow. another watch just for the costume. Because I didn't realize dedication. it didn't match my, You know, for the gram. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but speaking of wristwatch checks, mm-hmm. I want to get into something. Yeah. So I do have an Apple Watch. You do. Um, I do typically double wrist all the time with it. Mm-hmm. And I don't have a problem with it. It's, you know, when people say something to me, it's, I explain, I say, this is my tool. Like, yeah. I, I'll it hold it in tool. my left hand. This is my watch. My right hand. This is my tool. Like, yeah. you know, it is what it is. But I've had a problem with the watch fam. I'm so freaking tired of the Apple Watch hate and like just the way that people treat people who wear Apple Watches. And this, like we see it all the time on Instagram and in the Facebook groups and whatever. And y'all get the heck over yourselves. I had somebody come to my work who I've never met before, whatever. And lit- so I was wearing my big white plant edition. I know you see that I'm wearing an actual watch. Like, yeah. I know you see this Mm -hmm. where, and I was also wearing an Apple watch. Okay. Like I always do in my suit. And this man did not want to work with me because I wear an Apple watch. What? He literally insinuated that I, I, I am not a watch person because I'm wearing an Apple watch. And went to go work with somebody else. And because I'm Southern and I hashtag rise above and what would Dolly do and all of that. I'm just, oh, okay, you know, blah, 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 here's so-and-so. When, in fact, and I know where you work, you probably know more about watches than anybody else anybody that's there. No joke. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I was just so floored. And, you know, again, I, I'm always very, you know, customer service, it is what it is. Like, people are going to be ignorant. It's not the worst thing I've ever had somebody say to me at work. So I'm not that worried about it. Like, it didn't hurt me personally. Yeah. I don't care. But I'm just, I'm, it irritates me more this idea that you can't be a watch person and still wear an apple watch it has nothing to do with telling me what time it is i don't look at it to tell me what time it is i look at it because you know i'm one of these people who's now addicted to closing my rings every day so you know i want to make sure that you know i'm walking a little bit more standing a little bit more doing everything else also i like just getting my freaking text messages on my phone now and not have or on my my wrist and not have to worry about it as much yeah even even if I used it to tell me what time it is, get the hell over yourself. Well, that's to me, that's what he said to you is basically like saying if you saw someone with a cell phone and he's just like, oh, you're not you can't be a watch person because you look at the time on your on your phone. It's like it doesn't matter. I'm just so, I also look at the time on my computer. I'm so annoyed and I'm just so over it. Like, yeah. I, I don't understand. And I feel like it's attitudes like this that keep people who wear Apple watches from mm-hmm. wanting to like interact with regular watch people. Yeah. Because you assume that somebody who's wearing an Apple watch can't have an appreciation for, you know, mechanical timepieces or, and at that point, do you judge people who wear quartz watches the same way? Because yeah. quartz watches have just as little techno like mechanical, yeah. you know, history and heritage as an Apple watch does. It's a very ignorant thing to say. And, and ignorant is a good word. Yeah. And and to your point, I remember when, because you bought my previous Apple Watch. Yeah. And when I was wearing it, uh, I do remember I didn't post so I didn't post it a lot on my social media page because I would get a lot of hate for it. And it wasn't even that I would get a lot of hate. I knew what the comments were going to be like. And so I just, just didn't, didn't even want to bother. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of people, when they do post a picture of an Apple Watch, they have this whole description where the, you feel like they're trying to justify why they have it. Oh, trust me, I don't wear it every day. And it's like, 
you do you. If yeah. you want to wear an Apple Watch, I there was days that I straight up just wore the Apple Watch because I found that's the only watch I wanted to wear if that day. If the Watts fam knew how many days that I'm not at work that I just wear my Apple Watch. There's days Yesterday, I don't even wear way, a watch. The whole day. Ooh, cat. At yeah. least I'm wearing a watch. Yeah. I'm just saying. I, I mean, I'm just telling the truth. Like, there's no. days on the weekend that I, like, I'm not going anywhere. I just, and I haven't picked out a watch for the day and I'm, I'm watchless. But, Yeah. <laughs> Cut I need food. Off. Like I've mean, had so much candy. Like, oh my god! Uh. Yeah, I'm just you know it, it's so ignorant. It's frustrating, and I want to say that it's just this one instance. But again, I see it in the in in the Facebook groups. I, I'm not in the forums, but I can imagine it's the same thing in the forums. And you know, it's just it is very ignorant of people to judge anybody for what they wear on the wrist. I don't care. And honestly, yeah. as somebody who works in 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 watches, I see people a lot of times come in and buy their first nice watch Mm -hmm. because they've gotten used to wearing a watch. They've gotten used to wearing an Apple watch, but they want something that they can, you know, feel comfortable wearing in a boardroom or feel comfortable wearing, you know, out and about every day, or they just want something that's going to last and give the longevity yeah. And be generational. But if if we're still judging people for wearing it, yeah. nobody's people are just gonna assume it's it's the same thing that you assume before you go to your first watch meetup. Yeah. You're like, oh man, these are just gonna be a bunch of pretentious people. You know, they're just taking <laughs> Sometimes pictures. They are. <laughs> yeah, true. But I mean, you you know what I mean. Yeah, it, I know what it's you mean. so frustrating. And I'm just like, again. You don't even know me. You don't know that like I <laughs> just rude. Yeah. Just incredibly rude and, and yeah, ignorant to to that. And yeah, there's just nothing else to be said. It's just, it's stupid. Quit hating. Yeah. It's just it's so dumb. If you don't like Apple Watch, but you know what? By fine. all means he can go and get someone else to help him that doesn't know what they're talking about and good luck. Guess who Hope size you- his watch bracelet? <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I Man, I, people just get really crazy about things, and it, and it comes from a passion, and I understand that. But you know, there's just there's way too much negativity out there. Exactly. If it makes someone happy, you know, we uh, I talked to Erin, who's pocket trinkets a lot, and we've become friends. And she is uh, well, she's she's right handed, but she used to be left handed as a kid, and she wears her watch on her right wrist. I've noticed this actually, and it's and crazy. I just assumed it was because she was left handed, which well, she used to be. Yeah, this whole story, which is hilarious, but also like people call her out for wearing her the, her watch on the, the right wrist. But people don't know that she's not left But it doesn't matter. So if like, you want to wear your watch on your foot, by all means, go and do that. <laughs> like, I just don't care. Like, I've seen people post pictures of watches on the right wrist, and, and you just assume, like, oh, maybe, m- even if they are right-handed, maybe, and like she is, she just likes to wear the watch on that wrist because that's what she grew up as. Yeah. My dad, I think he is right-handed as well, but he still wears his watch on his right hand. That's just where he likes to wear it. Yeah. There's nothing else to it. It doesn't matter. It's a watch. Who cares? Yeah. People get so passionate in, in anyway. And I love peeves, people's I guess. passion. I do too. But quit, quit judging people we for it. use it for it. good. You yeah. Know? Exactly. I just wanted to just get well, that off my chest. Is yeah. Please stop judging people. Yeah. Just in life in it general. Doesn't, it's not if you're happen, the person though. who judges people for that, you're also the person who judges people for everything else. Like, yeah. Calm down. Life is not that serious. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's just, and for yeah. all of you, I mean, it typically, traditionally, a lot of women do wear Apple Watches. So for all of you guys who are judging people for wearing Apple Watches, these are the watches your wives wear. Do you think that they really want to get into horology with you talking yeah. shit about well, the watch that they wear Again, now? and if people that are listening that don't know this, the whole reason I got into this hobby was because of a smartwatch, mm-hmm. a fitness watch. Yeah. And my frustration with it. Granted, I still have a lot of respect for them, but... I would have never gotten into watches if it wasn't for that. Yeah. Because I wanted something on my wrist I could tell time. You don't know what people, you know, where people are in their watch journey. You don't know why why I chose to wear an Apple watch that yeah. day. And you don't know what else I have in my watch box at it, home. To me, it's like. And I know that this man saw this big ass white 42 millimeter PO yeah. on my other wrist. But that's fine, boo. Yeah. Ooh, boo at the end of that. Boo at the end. No, and she's not serious. like the sweetheart as boo. Yeah. No. That's when Kat That was the southern. She gets real serious when she says boo. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Are we ready to move on to like fantasy watch shopping? Fantasy. I'm ready because now I'm hot. I'm like trying to drink some water and cool down. Let's do it. This big sweater on. So wait, how many categories do we have? We have five categories. One, two, three. <laughs> 
Oh, we only have four categories. Awesome. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you probably could have scrolled faster than I did. I was probably. literally just arrow down. I know. I was like, why is the arrow moving down? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's say we're we're going watch shopping, all yeah. right? Like Jonathan's giving you permission. Now, that does our, not sound good. <laughs> our first category is interesting because neither of us are really overly into dress watches. That's true. So, but like, I feel like there are dress watches that both of us love there is. and like that we want to be dress watch people. Mm -hmm. We just don't live dress watch lifestyles. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to cocktail parties no, and, and everything else. I, I don't understand people who lives that life. That's Man. just not a Nashville I don't life. even know if that I would like it though. I don't know if I'd cocktail too much parties. Work. Having to get ready like that uh. all the time. Man. Okay, so real talk for a second. <laughs> I work from home now. I've worked from home essentially since COVID started. And I, <laughs> when I actually have to get ready, even if it's just like not even a big deal, like we're just maybe going to a restaurant or something, I, I hate it. And I used to, <laughs> I mean, I used to get ready every single, and, and when I say get ready, I mean blow dry my hair and do my makeup. You don't even blow dry your hair every day? No. Nope. Girl, do you know how much easier my life would be if I didn't have to blow dry my hair? I know. Like, I'll You're take like, I know. I no, live that life. For the record, I do take showers. I just like, I, like I'll leave my hair wet, let oh. it air dry, don't put makeup on. I have gotten so lazy <laughs> that I loathe getting ready. It sucks. <laughs> I feel like, see, even during now, during quarantine was different because I knew that was a finite period of time. Mm -hmm. But when I was in court, you know, when we were home um, and I, you know, I can't work from home. I was just home. Um, I did like I got ready every day. Like there was not a day that I was just in sweatpants. Like yeah. I lit I took a shower every morning. You know, I worked out, came home, took a shower. Yeah. Blow dried my hair. I didn't maybe didn't do a lot of makeup, but at least like a little bit of foundation, something, something uh, to make me look like yeah. alive. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I I did try and do that pretty much every day. But I could see like the like once you just settle into this routine of work from home and yeah. knowing nobody's gonna see you all day every day, man. Kind of nice. I bet you have a really great skin on your face right now, too. <laughs> that was the thing. Like, yeah, I got true. to where I wasn't wearing a lot of makeup, and my skin yeah. was so great. A lot less, like, breakouts and mm -hmm. stuff, for sure. Now I wear a mask for nine hours oh, a day. Man. And my face said, screw you, lady. <sighs> All right. Well, let's All right. talk about well, it. I don't know where we, where we were well, at. Well, we were talking about the fact that we don't wear dress watches oh, because yeah, we don't right. have this life. We don't dress up. But Clearly. <laughs> I mean, I wear a suit every day. You do. Um, you could easily pass one of these off. I could. Uh, all right. So if we were picking a dress watch, let's yeah. start with the under $1,000 category. If you okay. had permission and you wanted to buy a new dress watch under $1,000, what is your dress watch? So I'm going with the Hamilton Intramatic, the champagne dial that just was released yeah. like a month or two ago, available in the Houdinki shop. Now it's it's not a limited edition, mm -hmm. I read, but Houdinki did have a say in the design of it, I, I, I'm reading. So I guess it'll be available maybe outside of the Houdinki shop at some point in time. I've I've actually, believe it or not, I've owned the Intramatic before. And yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> Cat duh. owned a watch she doesn't own right now. Exactly. Um, and it was such a cool watch. Mm -hmm. If you like the Timex Marlin, if you like that... Um, you know, it's got this vintage 50s, 60s vibe. I love the Hamilton logo that they put on it. It's an incredible watch, and it feels, like, really hefty on the wrist, too. I just love this champagne dial they did. Yeah. And I think if I had to pick a watch that was under $1,000, I, I don't know how the price pulled up. I think it was 900 and something dollars. Um, that is, is, is what I would pick. Now, I got rid of this watch because... It didn't have a second hand on it. Mm -hmm. And for my job, I was I was a PTA. I had a time patience. I had to have a second hand. I was like, well, shoot, I'm not going to wear this watch. And uh, I, I thought it was a little too dressy for my line of work anyway. But <laughs> if we're picking dress watches, like <laughs> I'd pick it because I think it is classic. And I, I like that it doesn't have a second hand if for that purpose. If you're wearing it to go to an event or something else, you're not worried about the seconds when you go. You're probably not even going to be looking at your wrist. You shouldn't be, at least, unless yeah. you really hate where you are. <laughs> so um, I think it's just a classic watch. It's a great size. It's 38 millimeters. 
And um, it's one of my favorites that Hamilton has done. Yeah. What about you for no, under a thousand? I think that's great. And and I love the champagne dials. Yeah. I think champagne dials on a dress watch are absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm going to go vintage. I think that Ooh, if, you're, choice. if you're getting a dress watch, it's the perfect reason to go something vintage. You because be you careful don't with have it. to be. Yeah. You don't have to worry about water resistance or anything like that. So I think for under $1,000, I'm going to find like a decent uh, vintage Omega Seamaster Ooh, DeVille. Nice. Like for just that couple of years, the two families were blended together and they were mass produced. Yeah. Like so, so they're very easy to find on eBay or, or any place like that. They aren't overly expensive. You can pick up really decent ones for about seven to $800. They're perfect on straps. Like you can do a lot of different strap options with them. Yeah. Um, and I just, I think it's a really nice design. It, it's something that's not too dressy where I would feel kind of uncomfortable with it. Mm-hmm. But I think going going vintage, it, it's a great chance when you're looking at a dress watch because you don't care about, like, what am I, I'm not swimming if I'm in a cocktail dress. I hope yeah. I'm not swimming in a cocktail dress, <laughs> but um <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it, it's something that's really different and cool. I like that. Um, okay, so if you if you could have any dress watch, like not have to worry about a budget, if Jonathan just legitimately said you can just buy whatever you want. Yeah. Um, not and and when we did this, we realized there's tons of watches we want, but what would the whole idea is? What would you get first? Yeah. yeah. So, And now a word from today's sponsor. Hodinkee, the preeminent resource for all things watches, has recently announced a new venture, Hodinkee Insurance. Created in partnership with Chubb, the world's premier insurer of valuable collectibles, Hodinkee Insurance is a game changer in how you protect the watches you love. Signing up takes just a few minutes, and in most cases, you can instantly protect your watches with comprehensive insurance that's by two of the most trusted names in their industries. In most cases, you won't need independent appraisals or sales receipts, and you won't even have to speak with an agent to get your quote. With Hodinkee Insurance, there are no deductibles, and you receive full worldwide coverage with appreciation protection, meaning that you're covered up to 150% of each watch's value up to the policy limit. Hodinkee Insurance is available to U.S. residents in all 50 states. Visit insurance.hodinkee.com or download the Hodinkee app for iOS or Android to learn more and sign up today. So what first would you get that's over $1,000? Well, I think when you say that too, it, to me, it's like, uh, what are we looking at right now that we're, and, yeah. and all of these are like that. These are all, um, at least for me, these are all on my list that are mm-hmm. pretty hot watches this year because this is what I would go buy right now if you asked me to go buy a dress watch. Yeah. Um, and what I picked was the Fears Brunswick, the salmon dial. So yeah, I didn't even realize the champagne and salmon there, how similar they were. And that's kind of a coincidence, actually. It's so good. But yeah, it's so freaking good. I'm a huge fan of the Brunswick. And to me, I've kind of just been waiting for that dial that really just like speaks to me. And I think the salmon is it. I really do. I I like the blue. I like the white. But I love the salmon. Yeah. Really, really love salmon. Fair enough. And just having having held these watches, they're incredible quality. And so excited to get this one in soon to review, too. I know. Also... Yeah. Dangerous to get this one Dangerous. in. Dangerous. Big time. 100%. I'm going to cry. I'm going to send it back. <laughs> Can we just keep I'm gonna it like for a long time? I'm going to make here and pick it up. I love this idea. Yeah. If Nick wants his watch back, he has to yeah, get sorry. it in person. He's sorry, probably, Nick. wait, he'll, he's not going to send it now. <laughs> no, he'll still send it <laughs> because he'll just want an excuse to come back to Nashville. Exactly. All right. So, what about you? I actually also went with the Fears Brunswick, but I'm going with that blue dial. Yeah. Um, so we were actually just just talking with Nick uh, from Fears about how it was this time last year that he was in Nashville. Yeah. And he showed us, we got to see the Brunswick models, including the brand new blue dial, which debuted just shortly after, you know, yeah. today. Um, and the blue is just so stunning. And I think that... I think blue dial dress watch, it's just perfect because it goes with absolutely anything. It doesn't look too dark. Yeah. Um, and the blue, it's such a hard blue to really describe in person. And even photos rarely do it justice. It, yeah. It's absolutely incredible. But for the same reasons you said, I love the, I love the case design. It's vintage inspired, 
but, but still modern. really modern. Mm-hmm. And I, it's not a thin, like dainty dress watch either. It's got some, it's got a little bit of bulkness to it and Definitely. a little bit of heft. And I, I really enjoy that out of that watch. Plus the numerals. Now I will say you win with the numeral situation <laughs> because with the salmon, you have all the new numerals yeah. that were, that the were just font. designed yeah. with a new font. Right. But with the blue, you have the older font, which is like, still absolutely so, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so good. Yeah, one hundred percent. And the on the salmon, you have the the they're like an anthracite color. Yeah, uh, which is super cool too. Yeah, so. and I think I think it's funny just that. I mean, we we clearly are fans, but honestly, like if if someone gave us the money right now and they were like, you guys need to go pick up a dress watch. That is our like. It's just funny that that's both of our go tos. I know. I because we both well, been admiring I made them this though. Last night, yeah. I made this this you know our, our Excel sheet last night, and I was just like, you know, hey, like here it is. Just toss your watches on there. I'll do mine in the morning. Yeah. And then like I get over here and I open it, and I already had in my head like what I wanted <laughs> to put on here, but it was just a rush morning. I didn't have time. Yeah. And I open it, and there I see Fears Brunswick same, and I'm like, <laughs> dang it, I was gonna do the blue. <laughs> you know, I I put together this. Link list I went through them as fast as I could because yeah. I want it to be what was like on top really, of my head not, yeah not thinking about it not doing research just literally like what would I go buy right now mm-hmm. and and these are what came up and there might be other better options out there that I've talked about on the show but again these are just kind of what came first to my head yeah and I think if it if it's first in your head then it's it's what's on your mind so yeah. I I think that's a great way to have approached it so those are our dress watches. Pretty good ones. That's All right. Here's a category we know a lot about <laughs> is dive watches. Our favorite. Probably. Our favorite. Definitely mine. I would say for I sure. Love dive watches I think we so have, much. We both have a pretty heavy dive watch uh, collection. I could be, I would be happy with just a dive watch collection. Nothing else. Nothing more. I, I like wearing dive watches with like dresses and stuff same, like that. Like same. I, I, I had I think, a bad thought the other night. What? Oh. Tell us. I don't know if I want to say it. I don't know if I want to say it. So I, I literally thought about selling like (gasps) everything and just buying like what to me would be just like the ultimate dive watch. Is that the dive watch that you have listed here? What did I even put on here? I don't remember now. Oh, I said a probably watch on here. I think, oh, I meant to think about that one some more. Um, Maybe. All right. I don't, I don't think that I actually would, but. So what dive watch (laughs) would it be that you, you sell everything for? But here's the thing. I hate it you can hate me for it I love Rolex I really Mm -hmm. do I'm sorry you can hate on Rolex all you want I'm not saying they're the best watchmakers out there they're not there's plenty of people that do it better I like the way a Rolex feels I just do and I can't help that and like I I thought like I could sell everything just go go buy a sub I would be I think I would be happy with a sub Mm -hmm. now which sub is the question so many and it it's so insane how and I'm not like I I love Rolex. I think that they do phenomenal things, but I'm not like a really big. I'm not super into the brand where I yeah. know the differences. Like all the Submariners mm-hmm. over the years, I don't know the difference. Like yeah. when people, and I should I should study these things. But when people say like Red Text or yeah. you know Five Line or or whatever, I know it just implies to mm-hmm. different dials essentially. Yeah. Um, well, right. and the, I just the thing is, don't like, the know. changes and are usually pretty minimal. They're at so one minimal. Time. I don't know. I. I don't know. And I know some are more valuable than others and things like that. I would have no idea. I would just be like, I just want a Submariner, a box Submariner. Um, I don't care if it has red text or five lines. Well, my thought was to just like, it is, you know, the ultimate watch. And that's why a lot of people go for it because it's the watch you can wear with so many different things and it it looks good. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have that in other watches too. And I'm not, I'm not going to do that, but I just, the, the thought crossed my mind is all. And I was like. You know, sometimes you just get a, at least for me, sometimes I get fed up with the hobby a little bit and I'm just like, oh, I just want to sell everything. And oh, just good get- thing you have a, a podcast based on the <laughs> hobby. <laughs> well, I'm not saying that. I'm, I think watch collecting is what I no, mean I more so it. than a hobby. I get it. And um, just frustration and, and wanting this and wanting that and having too much and having too little and just like, man, I honestly think I could just be happy with just like one or two watches. I really, really do. And I think the ne- negativity comes from, you know, I see, I see our friends like Adrian from Bark and Jack and uh, even Jenny and, and her husband on their channels and some of the other watch YouTube spheres, um, people giving them a lot of hate just because they like Rolex. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I can like Rolex and not want to talk about them all the time too because I, I have a love and a passion for a lot of other watches. And um, 
you know, we also have a show that we talk for an hour. Adrian doesn't. He have a, he has a very small, short platform. So yeah. what are you going to say in five or six minutes? Well, he's going to talk about what he's really passionate about. And that's okay if it's Tudor and Rolex. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But uh, I guess some of that hate kind of just, it feeds into me a little bit. And uh, yeah, it sucks. You shouldn't care what other people think. I tell people that all the time. But at the end of the day, you just, you can't get away from it. Yeah. No, I hate to say it's, that. It's everywhere. Yeah. And I'm like, well, dang, if I, if I go by a sub and then I have like two or three watches and two of them are Rolex, people are just going to be like, oh, she doesn't know anything about watches because she has Rolex. I think, when I, 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 honestly, I feel like I'm guilty of that. And yeah. for that, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm sorry because <laughs> I do. I assume, you know, people who, you know, well, who have a collection come, of only yeah. one brand of watch that they're, they don't. And uh, typically it's, it would be Rolex. If, if yeah. a lot of people who have like one brand higher in collections, it's Rolex. And I feel but like is that's it fair to say watch. they don't care about watches because they have one brand. No, it's not even that they, because they it's have just, one brand. It's because a lot of people buy Rolex who don't know the anything name. about watches. Yeah. So it's, it's, and to I be think fair, that, they they made a pretty good choice. Like if you know nothing yeah. about watches, like no, it's a, you're it's getting a the better end of the deal. It's a great option. Yeah. No, for sure. And I I feel like I wrongly just kind of assume yeah. that people who who do who have like sol- you know all Rolex collections or whatever yeah. don't know a lot about watches because they probably just bought it because it's a Rolex. Yeah, I do like. I've asked people, I've said, you know, why Rolex? Mm-hmm. And if you can't tell me a reason, then yeah, I know that it's just because yeah, of well, the for name, me it's, it's, which it's, is fine. Yeah. But if you tell me it's because of the, the way it feels on the wrist, the build quality, you mm-hmm. know, you like this and this and this about it, then I, I can respect that and I can appreciate that. Yeah. And even that, if you buy it just for the name, fuck it. As long, it's your money. Yeah. Do what you want. Yeah. So I'll apologize for being judgy. Well, I, I, like I said, I'm not, you know. Well, yeah, that too, just like, in general. I, I'm owning this about myself <laughs> is that I've been judgy. This is a safe towards place. People. This is a safe place. And I was just, you know, venting about people who, who judge Apple Watch people. Yeah. And I judge Rolex people. We're all judgy. That's the thing. I'm sorry, y'all. Don't hate me, y'all. I like other watches. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Speaking of. <laughs> Speaking of. All right. So my dive, dive watch, watch pick. Under $1,000. If you can go out and buy any dive watch right now, what is it? Oh, I'd buy that Seiko Captain Willard <laughs> in a second. In a second. Um, yeah. I went, that watch came out. I had just bought the Seiko Turtle, the green. You really had like the green a week grenade. before. Yeah. That. They came out so close together. And I was like, darn it. Because. I I really wanted that watch and I had just spent, you know, I don't know however many, you know, dollars on the on the Seiko Turtle, but I was like, I can't really justify both. And and now I have the Safarni and I'm so happy with this watch. It's so badass. Like it's one of those, like, no matter what happens to my collection, I think this is just gonna stay. Um, because I, I don't know why I'd want to get rid of it. It's just mm-hmm. freaking bad. It's taken over my G Shock completely. But yeah, the Seiko Captain Willard, I I watched the movie. I, I loved it. It was awesome. And I feel like there's a little bit more of a connection now to that watch. Uh, Cole from Houdinki wrote an amazing article on it that really went into just more than just the movie itself and the history of that specific model. Yeah. And the green dial is just, I have a thing for green. What can I say? Green is this color of 2020. It's not even the color. Tw- for me, it's just like, it's my favorite color. So I just like it. It's cool. What about you? Under $1,000. Under $1,000. I am going with a Christopher Ward Trident Pro. Yeah, um, I've had a really Are big they obsession. Dollars? Yeah, they're like, like Whoa. you can get them starting at like six hundred dollars, wow. six like six ninety five, something That's like that. Good. So the one that like the Trident Pro six hundred is like nine ninety five. Okay, um, but even then, for everything this watch offers, and and I've I've really been a fan of Christopher Ward since. Well, we had that bronze one mm-hmm. in the bronze Trident uh, that a listener had sent into us, and it was such a great watch to check out. But I just, I love, like, I've listened to uh, the interview with Mike France on the Scottish Watchers podcast a long time ago. Yeah. And I just, I love what the brand is doing. I, I think everybody who has a Christopher Ward Trident, nobody says anything bad about it. I, like, I feel at like all. Christopher Ward, um, they have a very strong fan base mm-hmm. for sure. And that and that's a good thing. That that lets me know that that people who buy their watches care passionately about them because they really enjoy them and that's yeah. a good thing. Well, and they have a, a even though they're a UK base, they have a worldwide presence. Yeah, definitely. Which I think makes a big difference because you're not gonna have that if it's not 
you know, a great quality, everything else. So I think, you know, for, for under a thousand dollars, it's a phenomenal watch. There's tons of options. I honestly might, I would probably go with the black dial, but I was, I did, ask you I was color. tempted more the white dial black bezel option. The white dial black bezel is pretty bad. Um, but you know, I, I'm having a, I'm having a, an existence an existential crisis with white dial dive watches. So, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know how I feel about them anymore, yeah. uh, I, which really is devastating. And yeah. I'll talk about this with my, my next choice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think Christopher Ward, the Trident Pro 600, I really, I hope that we can start getting some hands-on experience with some of these as well. Um, because I, I'm curious to check them out in person and see like what the hype really is. Yeah. about. All right. So, if you had any amount of money, what what would your next dive watch be? So for me, it's the Glass Shoots Original, the CQ, would be my unlimited budget dive watch. I was torn between this and the Hulk, to be honest with you. But this watch came out and I do, I like the the bigger version, 43.2, which is big. They have a 39 millimeter variant, but I don't like the, I don't like the smaller one. So I, I just go with the bigger one, to be honest with you. It's such a stunning watch. Really, really, really big fan of it. And it's different. It's not like any other dive watch it's out like there. It's a dressy dive watch. It is a dressy almost. dive watch. Yeah. But it looks so good. It looks good on bracelet. It looks good on the the nylon strap that comes with it. And honestly, I've never really had hands-on experience with this brand. Someone asked us about it while we were on our live stream today. Yeah. And I'd love to. I mean, if anyone has the hookup, let us know. But um, <laughs> I know I know we need to reach out to Adrian because I think he does. But oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to get hands on. I think they're beautiful. They're just stunning. It's not the dive watch that you expect, mm -hmm. honestly. Like yeah. I said, it's a little bit dressier. It's a very refined and and sexy dive watch, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. I love it. All right, what about you? What's your unlimited dive watch? It's got to be a white dial because you were just talking about no. it. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, so I've been. For anybody who doesn't know, I've been obsessing over the white dial Ploprof, but yeah. not these new titanium ones. The older one okay. that was stainless steel with a the black of brick. An no, orange? there's a white dial. There was a white one. White bezel. And okay. the bezel is fully loomed. And oh, it is yeah, so yeah, yeah. good. I love this watch. But I really am having a problem with white dial dive watches right now. Mm -hmm. um, this is my problem with my, with my Planet Ocean that I have is... Um, and we've talked about this, is that the the luminescence is slightly tinted, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, I feel like once I see it, I can't unsee it. And at first I was like, wait, is this patina? Like, what's going on? Like, yeah. once I started to really notice it. And I know it sounds ridiculous and, and stupid and... I don't know. I just can't unsee it. So I'm I'm trying to take a step away from white dial dive watches for a little while. Mm -hmm. But unlimited funds, y'all, I'm finally going to get that Doxa. <laughs> Man, like I've been talking about this watch forever. I need I need a sub 300. Um, what color? I want to say orange because orange is like the classic Doxa. You yeah. know, I feel like it, it's the... It's so traditionally doxic. You know what movie I watched a couple, like, last week? What? Sahara. Oh, yeah. Matthew with McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. I mean, I don't mind watching that movie. Me neither. But, um, but it was just so cool seeing, like, the doxa. And I was yeah. trying to explain to Tyler why it was so cool. And he just mm -hmm. kind of rolled his eyes like 14-year-olds do. Um, but also the turquoise looks so good. Yeah. Or no, it's not turquoise. It's they call No, they call it aquamarine. It's basically turquoise. Though. But it's... Uh, I need to see it in person because yeah. I feel like sometimes it's you have been, too light. You've been really wishy-washy on it. I, thank you. <laughs> see, I'm very particular about about my shades of blue. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but I feel like the orange orange is the safe option. If I never get to see the the aquamarine, mm -hmm. then it's definitely the orange. But yeah. if I can see the aquamarine and see it not in a showroom, like I need to like. I need some watch salesperson to let me take it outside. <laughs> yeah. And like, I'll be like, I'll leave my watches here. Here's yeah. my purse. Here's my watches. Like, I just need to step outside and see this. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. Well, and, and well, I was just going to say that, like, yes, orange is classic for the Doxa, but also the case of the Sub 300, if that's what you were going to get, like, it's so iconic that I think you could go with a different yeah. color. And from, a, like, from afar, I would still recognize that watch. I'd still say, oh, that's a Doxa. Yeah. Because they are so, like... They're iconic. There's nothing else to me that looks like them. That that Aquastar maybe a little bit, but um, or is it Aquastar? Is that what they're called? 
I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the docs is so well, when we had, recognizable. When we had the orange ones in, uh, we, we had a couple of friends send us theirs and uh, they're sub 300 and sub 600 or sub 1200. Wait, what did we have? Three. 300T? <laughs> it's been a while. So when we had when we had some friends, maybe send we should upload all those in. pictures that I took. <laughs> My bad. Our bad, y'all. When we had some friends send some doxes in. We, uh, you know, my thing was, was I didn't know if I would wear the orange all that much, but I yeah. did. I said, fuck you it. I wore it all the time. I wore it with all sorts so, of different color shirts that, and I just, I yeah. didn't care. I didn't worry about yeah. it. But well, you have that, that Seiko Samurai that's that orange. I never wear. You never wear, but then you loved, and, and maybe it's just the watch. You just love the I watch I think it more. is just the watch. Yeah. I, I love that watch more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, for me, like I'm typically pretty OCD about matching like my watch to what I'm wearing. Yeah. But that Doxa, I just, I didn't care. Now the problem, the problem with when we have these watches in for review is do I not care because I only know, I know that I have a finite amount of time with them. That is true. These are the the real problems that I need to talk to somebody about. <laughs> like, <laughs> you need help? I do. I need help. We all need help. Yeah. All right. Next category. Yeah. Go anywhere, do anything, watch. I love this category. I love this category because I feel like other than dive watches, this is our other, all of our watches <laughs> fit either a dive watch or a Because that's who we are. Like, like this is the kind of watches we buy. Yeah, exactly. And we've even turned like what would typically be a dress watch from <laughs> from Nick at Fears. We turned them into like casual go anywhere, do anything watches. Sorry, Nick. Oh, man. <laughs> but all right. So under $1,000. What's your go anywhere, do anything choice? I go with the new Astro and Banks, the Fortitude. I'm so excited and to I go see with these. The turquoise style. Man. Yeah. I was really like a huge Mother of Pearl fan when I first saw it, but I think I'm I'm leaning more towards the turquoise now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really do you know excited what I to love see, see is that I've seen so many men reposting that Mother of Pearl dial. Yeah. And like that they love this. Yeah. And all well, this. I've seen I saw they did a post the other day where they've had a lot of sales of these. Um that people are buying two. They're buying one, you know, a guy's buying one for him and he's buying one for his wife. And I'm just like, yeah, that's awesome. Like, that's the this, goal. The, yeah, the lady yeah. in this guy's life is just going to have a badass watch. Yeah. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to see more people with really cool watches on the wrist too. So no, I can't, I can't wait to check these out. And yeah. I think the turquoise, the turquoise, I think is my favorite yeah. for sure. I think they're um, both incredible. Um, they all are really. They, they the are. navy dial is yeah. amazing. Then there's that limited edition that's with the navy. It's like a navy gilt dial. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. with like a Chicago based like fashion, yeah, or, or like clothing wear, clothing department or something like that. Yeah. I should know more about these things. Sorry. But, <laughs> oh man. Yeah. No, I, I'm very excited to check those so out. So, what about you? What for under a thousand dollars? What is your go anywhere, do anything watch for under a thousand dollars? I am going with the Notice Sector Field in blue. Oh, in blue. Is this the blue? This is. They only, oh, they only have one shade of blue for this, yeah, don't they? Only, okay. But it's like a, it's a gradient blue. Like yeah. it, it starts out lighter in the, in the center. That's a good, and then oh, goes I love to that. Navy. Like light blue secondhand too. It's a really great watch. Yeah. But here's the problem is I really overlooked oh, this Oh, that's the collection. only one sold out right now on their of website. Course, of course, of <laughs> course. Clearly, that means I'm going to have to go with my more expensive option. You know, I only have the only have this choice. But, you know, I, I think the frustrating thing, I, I totally overlooked this whole collection, the sector field. And I was like, no, you know, it's not really my cup of tea. I don't think that they look all that great, whatever, based off of their the photos on their website. Right. Mm-hmm. Just like the standard, you know. PNG picture that we see from everybody but when you see like on the wrist pictures and like real life pictures of this watch it's incredible it's yeah. so stunning you know and I think and we were talking about this earlier it's like like I get why why brands do you know just this basic picture on the website but I, I feel like like maybe you get more interest with the more lifestyle or something like but that. But if you click on it, does he have lifestyle um, photos? I don't know. Because most out. do. I feel like most will show the stock image or the rendering, but then you click it and you can see real life yeah, photos. Yeah, they do. I guess that's true. I guess I just never, never made it that far. Um, but the more like I'm looking on like their Instagram feed and everything. Oh, see, now I'm even looking through the <laughs> team it. I'm about to text. Oh, that's really. I'm about oh, to text it's almost West. like. Is it Sunburst too? It looks like it. Oh wow, mm. that's awesome. Can we get the blue in? <laughs> <laughs> 
like, hey, when you send us this other watch, can you send this too? The sold out watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's quite beautiful. And I, I think I, I'm a big fan of Notice. I have two of their watches. Mm-hmm. Like I I think the quality is there for, for less than five hundred dollars. Yeah. I, I think they're well, phenomenal I think they took quality. over what used to be Seiko's price point and now yeah. Seiko's moved up and I think Notice has kind of really taken over and, and several other micro brands as well. But mm-hmm. I love that because I think there's so much more character to these these micro brand watches. To be I honest agree. With you. I yeah. definitely agree. And, and yeah, to to your point, you know, Seiko just kind of keeps increasing their prices as they should. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think that that's where you you get this open door for micro brands to step up. Yeah. And Notice is one that does that very well under this price point. So yeah, um, I'm really excited. I want to check one of these out. <laughs> All the watches. All the watches. Okay, so over a thousand dollars, like any price point. Um, what is your go anywhere, do anything? Sitting on my tail. <laughs> Had to move my tail. Uh, all right. So for me, my my unlimited funds gonna go buy right now is the Moser Streamliner Center Seconds Green Dial. Yeah, the Green Dial. Uh, the Center Seconds. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a perfect watch. It's water resistant. Screw down crown. Incredible dial, incredible bracelet, incredible feel, just an incredible watch. I'm such a fan of Moser. I, when they we had, got to meet Mike, who works for them, he came down and showed us a bunch of watches, and I just like I just fell in love with the brand. And um, you know, we were fortunate enough to get an interview with Edward, and and it was amazing. And yeah, I'm just uh, I'm a big fan. I love the watch. Yeah, it's it's a phenomenal watch. It's, I mean, it it's expensive. Is. I mean, it's but to me, it's like it's one of those watches that. I, I do feel is, is worth the price because mm-hmm. I, like I held it in my hands. I could see it. I, there's nothing like it. So yeah. What about you? What's your unlimited funds? Unlimited funds. Go anywhere, do anything. I'm going to be a Rolex fan girl. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> I am going with the, the new Oyster Perpetuals. I love them. Yeah. Um, I would go with either the 41 and Tiffany blue or even the 36 in the pink dial. Yeah. Um, I wish they did the thir- the pink in the larger size, Same. but Rude. whatever Rolex be that way. It's fine. Rude. Um, but yeah, I, I love that OP bracelet. I think it, it's a it's a great everyday bracelet. Mm-hmm. I you know Jubilee bracelets are not necessarily my cup of tea. They are kind of growing on me a little bit. I think mm-hmm. for the right watch, they're fine. But the OP bracelet is phenomenal. It, yeah. It's it's thin. It's lightweight. You know the watch in general. It it's something that you can wear for anything. Not have to worry about it. You could, God forbid, you could beat it up a little bit. It'll be okay. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't. I would probably cry. Like, I stress out over beating up my watches now. Like, especially my Speedmaster, I would probably cry the first time I scratched a Rolex if I owned one. Yeah. I would have to come with a scratch on it. Like, I would just need someone. Like, I would tell my salesperson, can you just scratch the bracelet just a little bit for It's going to happen. Yeah. I know. But it's like. It's, yeah. I saw an advertisement on Facebook. I thought it was funny. It was like this, um, it almost looked like saran wrap type material yeah. that you can put over your clasp. And it almost looks like you don't have anything on there. But they showed someone like taking their keys and scratching the clasp with a Rolex. And it I wasn't see scratching. people all the time. Put a piece leave of tape. Like, yeah, or, or leave, the like the, leave the sticker on That's the clasp and all. I, I just don't. It's I mean, tacky to me. It does look tacky to me. It's weird to me. It's scratches are gonna happen. Gonna I mean, happen. like as long as I'm not scratching a bezel, like I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah, it is what it is. Especially on the class. If, yeah, if you have any sort of job where you're typing, writing, anything like that, it's just it's inevitable. Yeah, it's sure. weird. I've never really understood that. Sorry, <laughs> the day is hitting us. I'm getting really tired. The day tired. is hitting us in, in so many ways. We oh. we've had. Oh, cat's funny. Her <laughs> face, and she's got all this makeup on. Um, we've had so much Halloween candy, and then pizza. we're crashing. I'm like, <laughs> I'm totally seriously crashing. gonna crash. I literally went downstairs to get a coffee at five <laughs> o'clock this evening. Um, coffee and breadsticks, very well balanced diet. Well, we're we're almost there. So the last category, <laughs> which you put on here, was the non-traditional, and you specifically said something absolutely crazy and funky in design, which I love. Yeah. Um. And that you would normally have, we would have to talk ourselves into buying. But there are those watches. Of that course. They, they could be a dive watch. They could be whatever. They're just but like, like nah, it's, I don't know yeah, if I can pull it like off. You or wouldn't just, yeah. do it normally. Yeah. But like, 
like you have to, like you have to buy something out of the box. Yeah. So for under a thousand dollars out of the box, what are you buying? <laughs> I'm going with the Hamilton PSR digital. Um, this watch is just, it's really cool. Our, our buddy Blaine has one. I've just, I've been eyeing it a lot lately. It's digital. I don't even think that there's from what he was telling me, there's like no functions on it. It's literally just like a digital <laughs> screen. There's but it no like, looks like it should. It have looks like there's, yeah, but it doesn't. It's just a digital watch. It just tells you the time digitally, which is kind of cool. But yeah, it's such a funky design. I love that. I just love these retro watches. I like the um, the Zodiac Astrographic too. This uh-huh. kind of falls into that same category yeah. for me. Just real like 60s, 70s vibe, and and it's such a watch that. I mean, heck, you could even say like the Hamilton Ventura as well. But some of those watches I would really oh, have that to have been a good pick. Talk talk myself into, but uh, yeah, because they're not the if, watch if, that if you're you gave me the money the and I was like gonna go buy a crazy watch, that's probably what I'm gonna go buy. I like it. Yeah. It, it would have been my first pick too. But yeah, since you picked it, I went with something different. <laughs> What'd um, you go with? I'm actually like, so we had this uh, E1 Bradley yeah. for review, um, and and it's crazy cool, and it, it's a watch that. I get a lot of like, like I, I've worn it to the grocery store and like run a couple of errands and, you know, I get people who pay attention to it, mm-hmm. which is almost a little frustrating because like then I <laughs> wear my nice watches and it's nobody like cares. I don't exist. Yeah. yeah. Nobody gives an F about me. Um, but it, it's so funky and different and cool. They're really not expensive. You know, I, I like the added fidget spinner function <laughs> where like it's just really cool because if you mess with the so if you don't know, this is a watch that we have in for review. Um, E1, they make watches that are for for people with disabilities as far as like being blind or hard of seeing, but they make them modern and contemporary enough where everybody can wear them. It's almost more of a fashion watch, mm-hmm. but it uses ball bearings and you can like if you move the ball bearings on the watch they automatically go back so like you can just kind of fidget with them and mess with them yeah i like it yeah and i think it's super cool tyler really likes it too so yeah i might actually wind up getting him one but that's um, cool yeah he really likes they it. do have a look to him you would i mean i wouldn't know that it's a watch for the blind unless Mm-mm. you pointed it out to no. me it's just a cool looking function on a watch yeah it's so different it's really funky and kind of out there so yeah that's a good option. Um, yeah. All right. So unlimited funds. You took unlimited funds so seriously right now. I don't even remember how expensive this. I don't remember. It it's was like very, $70,000. Was that much? Yes. Oof. Yes, me. Oof. So I went with the all gold G-Shock Square. Oof. Yeah. Cat is baller. Why not? Like, man, <laughs> I, I, that watch is so badass, though. I agree. It's amazing. Yes. It's so ridiculous. I remember uh, our friend Rob from Topper Jewelers. He uh, he had an unboxing video of this watch. Do you remember yeah, that on I Instagram? Remember. And it was so intense. Like there's just so much to it. It came out like this really fancy Japanese. What is it? Tea kettle or something yeah. like that. It was and so... like popped out from the middle. Oh and my god. Yeah, it's it's one of those watches again that I, given the money, would have a really hard time spending on because it's so crazy. It's so wild. But if you're asking me to, yeah. Go for it. If you if you have if to spend to, seventy thousand dollars on the watch, um, I mean, our, my money could be very much well spent with other brands. But man, that watch is so cool. But it's gold. Gold's an investment, cat. Oh yeah, it's true. Yeah, there you go. Just buy that way. Just we'll go tell Jonathan downstairs. <laughs> yeah, fine. Um, who needs four hundred one k? It's fine. What what is your what is your unlimited budget pick? I am something crazy and, and just kind of different and a watch that does not get the love I feel like it deserves. Yeah. Is the Omega Bullhead. Oh yeah. So these watches came out in like two thousand and the brown dial or just like one of the other ones? There's this I, I don't know why I think of the brown picture. dial every time I think of that watch. Um so like there's three dials. There isn't even a brown dial option. There's a brown strap option that had a white dial. But these watches came out in I think in like two thousand and Oh, I'm 12? thinking of vintage. No, yeah, these are the the reissues. Oh, the reissues. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I think they came out in 2012, maybe 2013 or 14, something like that. Um, but they're vintage reissues of the original bullhead, and so the bullhead it just took the chronograph movement and, and kind of inverted it a little bit, where you have the pushers at the top, and that style yeah. was really like Seiko did a bunch of those in the yeah. late '60s, and and when you look at it, it just makes me smile because it it gives me 
Like, I feel like everything that was in the early 70s, late 60s has that overly futuristic design. You yeah. know, that was when what people everybody thought the future thought was going to be. Was, right. <laughs> Little did they know that we're all sitting at home and we can't freaking go anywhere because we might <laughs> die. Um, but before that, yeah, like what they, what they, you know, they thought we'd be flying around in cars. And so everything had this big, curvy, like really sexy, over the top feel to it and really sharp edges too. And I love that. Yeah. So I love the Bullhead series. I think it's one of my absolutely favorites. And these are still available, even though they were, they were all thick, limited. They? They're thick. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're so thick. They're not. They're not little. <laughs> they're not thin either. But yeah, they're super thick. Now, the one downside to this watch is you can only have like oh, that's, one that's particular. Cool. It's like the roulette dial. Yes. Yes, exactly. So I let my favorite dial option was the white dial. The inner rotating bezel is a 24 hour bezel, oh, so cool. um, which is cool because it has an added GNT function. Yeah. But it looks like a roulette wheel on on the white dial version. And this was my favorite. But like I was saying, it's you actually can, not oh, priced that bad. They're not terrible. It it's was terrible. limited to 669 pieces. Yeah. So it's like a true Omega. I know, but I'm saying for like a limited watch, that's like not yeah. a bad price. I mean, that's, I'm sure you can find it cheaper, but yeah. it's so terrible. That seems actually a bit much for authentic watches, if I'm being honest. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I just, I like it. It's just, it's fun. I see it's this watch there. every now and then. It's so different. And it's, it's under $10,000 at retail. Yeah. So like, it's not. It's on a seventy thousand dollars G Shock. Yeah. But um my one downside is the strap because of the way that it has the the crown at the six o'clock, you have to have a, a cutout right there. So like Omega only makes like it's not like something you can put on a bunch of straps. But also I could just have a bunch of stuff custom made and yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. But I love this watch. I've been obsessed with it for a long time. It's very cool. Yeah. Super like out there. One. But that's it. Man, that was fun. Fantasy watches. And now we're going to go back to real life where we just I'm look sad. on the internet and we don't buy anything. So I am curious. I want to know what people's fantasy watches would be. I think yeah. I'm going to post a whole story series Let's next week. Let's do a story. Week. Like every out. day I want to know what your fantasy watch and each price point is yeah. going to be. Let us know. Yeah. So head over to our, oh, this is a great way to close it all out. Yeah. So you can follow us over on <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at 10 and 2 Media. And if you're ever on Instagram, you can check our stories all week yeah. long. And I want to know what your what your next watch purchase for each of the categories will be when we post a story about it. And then head over to our website, www.tennand2.com, and check out our show notes, all that fun jazz. I think that's going to be it, right? I think so. All right, nothing else to talk about. No other announcements or anything. So with that, enjoy y'all's week. Yeah. Well, I was like, I'm sorry. Trying to think. All of a sudden, we're just like, everything's <laughs> winding down. Uh, but enjoy your week and we will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye, y'all. So for me, <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Spell check. <laughs> sorry. I'm like a five-year-old child here. It's so funny. <laughs> it's like I, I Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> all right i tried not to get just gonna live it you're gonna leave it i'm just there. gonna leave it awesome i'm just gonna leave the gla glass boot on there glass um, boot